moment here in Miami. Jose Feliciano, the flyover. When the fireworks went off, we had to pick Terry up off the floor for a second, but we're all good <laughs> and ready to go here tonight. This is exciting. Everybody always loves the opening of a new ballpark, and, and this is going to be a, a pretty special season, it looks like, uh, for the Miami Marlins. Let's start with the defending World Series champions, the St. Louis Cardinals. No Tony La Russa, no Albert Pujols. The beginning of a new era for them as well as they head into 2012. And they've entrusted it all into Mike Matheny. Mike's not only managing his first major league game, he's managing his first game. And it speaks volumes to what the organization thinks of Mike, that they've entrusted this team to him, a team that's coming off a World Series championship. Now, the Miami Marlins made a huge splash in the offseason. It wasn't the Yankees and Red Sox spending all the money. The Marlins spent almost $200 million, and they brought in a lot of quality players. Yeah, they brought in Mark Burley, a starter, 200-inning expert, 10 wins the last 11 years. Then they bring in a closer in Heath Bell, 132 saves. That's the most in the major leagues over three years. But then the key ingredient at shortstop, Jose Reyes, he's going to start at shortstop. And it could have been a really awkward situation, but Jose made it wonderful. He moved Hanley Ramirez to third base, and this guy can play. They're excited. They're together. And, and Ozzie Guillen thinks this is a really, really exciting team. There is a lot to talk about down here in Miami. Two teams with playoff aspirations, of course. The Cardinals, the defending World Series champions, and the Marlins. So much excitement surrounding them. New name, new logo, new ballpark, new manager, and new stars as we get ready for baseball. Let's go down to the field. Buster Olney's with one of the Marlins stars, Giancarlo Stanton. John Carlo, you had a chance of hitting this ballpark when the roof is closed, like it's going to be tonight. How is this going to play? Um, you know, it's kind of in and out. Uh, some balls jumped off, and some kind of stayed uh, stayed up for a little bit. So, you know, we, we're gonna have to play for a little while and uh, get a better feel for it. Now, you guys have been the Florida Marlins, a team that couldn't draw fans and had a low budget. How different are the expectations for the Miami Marlins? It's completely different. You know, as you can see, uh, it's amazing out here. You know, everything's beautiful. Um, you know, the fans are loving it. We brought baseball down to Miami, so it's going to be wonderful. Now, Carla, thanks. Dan, back to you. Hey, Buster, thank you. You can just feel the excitement here. Jose Reyes, described by Ozzie Guillen as the light of this team, that infectious enthusiasm. Hanley Ramirez is happy. Carlos Zambrano is happy. Ozzie Guillen is happy. And they're excited about the prospects of maybe doing something the Marlins haven't ever done before. And that's win a division. They've won the World Series twice, but they've never won a division. Ozzie Guillen says if everybody just has their normal season, the Marlins have a chance to do some special things. First pitch is coming up momentarily here at Miami. The Cardinals and the Marlins coming up, but first let's send it back to the PA announcer here at Marlins Park. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the field Miami Marlins owner Jeffrey Loria and a man who first won the heavyweight championship of the world right here in Miami, the greatest of all time, Muhammad Ali.
Fans, let's hear for our special guest tonight, Ali. 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 Muhammad Ali here at Marlins Park here tonight. Handing off the ceremonial first pitch commemorating a fight that he had with Sonny Liston in 1964 in Miami Beach when the then 22 year old Cassius Clay defeated Sonny Liston and became the heavyweight champion of the world. Miami Beach Florida back in 1964 and Muhammad Ali here at Marlins Park here tonight. That's one more time. How about a special run of the floor? Baseball is next. The St. Louis Cardinals, the Miami Marlins, and the stateside opening night for the 2012 Major League Baseball season is coming up next. Six months. It's been six months and six days and just about 19 hours. Grand slam. The Yankees lead 5 -0. We all still remember every moment of it. 
I smell the coffee brewing. Ugly rounding third. Here's Pence's throw to the plate. The tag. He is out at home. He got him. Well, the plot thickens here in Baltimore. The rain has intensified. A night like none other in baseball history. All unfolding across the country at once. Sam Johnson is in the bottom of the ninth inning. Play is about to resume. Red Sox with a 3 2 lead. Going to find a hole on the right side. And this one is over, and the Atlanta Braves have been eliminated, and the St. Louis Cardinals have won the National League wild card. Crawford playing shallow, cannot make the catch. He scores! And the Baltimore Orioles stunned the Boston Red Sox. And a 2 2 pitch to Longoria. And the Tampa Bay Rays are going to the postseason. It was a night to remember. Setting up October perfection and a World Series title captured by an unlikely hero. It is gone! And the Cardinals are World Series champions! A mob scene near the mound on the infield. The confetti explodes all over the ballpark. The St. Louis Cardinals in Game 7. In the months since, changes and lots of them. <laughs> on the field and in the dugout. I'm pretty damn excited. <laughs> the defending world champs are now defined by new cornerstones and a new postseason hero. An aggressive offseason of change has the Marlins and the city transformed into a contender for a third title. It's going to be a good year, my friends. It sure does have the feeling of a good year. The 2012 Major League Baseball season as Josh Johnson takes the mound here at a brand new Marlins Park. A lot of excitement here in Miami for the Marlins as they get set to take on the St. Louis Cardinals here tonight. Just a one-game series, a one-game stopover for the defending World Series champions under new leadership this year. First-year manager Mike Matheny. Longtime major league catcher, spent four years with the Cardinals, won three gold gloves with the Cardinals, four in his career. And he is the new man in charge after 16 years with Tony La Russa as the manager. Let's take a look now with the Cardinals starting lineup tonight, brought to you by Can Am. Now, this team did lead the league and run scored last year. No Pujols, of course. They bring in Carlos Beltran, who had a good spring. He's hitting second in the lineup. Lance Berkman had a terrific year last year. 31 homers, 94 RBIs. He moves back to first base. He'll hit cleanup. Matt Holliday assumes Albert Pujols' third spot in the lineup. Not an easy way, Oral, to start the season facing Josh Johnson. Uh, Josh Johnson is the ace of this staff, and health is the only question. But after that, there is nothing about health that you worry about. The slider is wipeout. He's absolutely amazing. He is filthy. And if he stays healthy, they can have a big year. Capacity crowd of better than 37,000 here tonight. At Hickox, the third base umpire, Laz Diaz at second, Angel Hernandez at first, and Ed Rapuano is the home plate umpire here tonight. Ready to say play ball and get the stateside edition of the 2012 Major League Baseball season underway. And the first pitch is in there for a called strike. You just can't swing at the first pitch in a new ballpark, right? It's against you the know, rules. You know, all this pageantry, and it was wonderful, <laughs> but now we get to play baseball. Yeah. That's even better. <laughs> Rafael for a call will lead it off for the Cardinals. Had a tough time last year. Signed a new two-year deal with the Cardinals after coming over to St. Louis midseason. And a fastball right over the outer edge at 94, and Johnson's in front 0-2. Josh Johnson, only nine starts last year. The season ended in May with shoulder inflammation. But when he was in there, his slider was a wipeout pitch. Batters hit 074 off his slider when an at bat ended with that pitch. 1 2, a chopper to short. An early play for Jose Reyes for out number one. I think always a special moment for baseball fans whenever a ballpark opens anywhere. And that's the case here tonight. And the flash bulbs, as you would imagine, are going off by the thousands as Josh Johnson delivers that first pitch of the game. 
One down here at the top of the first. The batter is Beltron. First pitch swinging, and he lines one into right field for a base hit. A sliding attempt by Stanton, and he'll smother it enough to hold Beltron to a single. It's Carlos Beltron's sixth hit in his last ten at bats against Josh Johnson. I think that's owning somebody of late. Looks like he jumps right on the fastball and doesn't let him get to that great slider. So Johnson will work from the stretch for the first time. Beltron at first, one out of the batter is Matt Holiday. And again, this is where you you can't help but think this is Albert Pujols' spot for the last 11 years. This is where the game's greatest player, for the most part, hit in the number three spot of the Cardinal lineup. Holiday dealt with a number of injuries last year, still hit 22 homers, drove in 75. Terry, what about the addition? Of Beltron to the Cardinal line. You know he's a he's a guy that can hit. He switch hits. He can hit for power, and he's hitting in that two hole, which the Cardinals with Tony Larusa have always liked, and Mike Matheny is going to follow along right in those footsteps. Doesn't run nearly as much as he used to. I think if you told the Cardinals you'd get 140 healthy games out of them, they'd take that in a heartbeat. Not going in the pitch to Holiday, a swing and a miss, 0 and 1. The Beltron used to be a guy that you could count on for 30 to 40 bags, but now at this point in his career, last year only stole four bases. So he's over there to make sure that first base is occupied, leave the hole open, and wait for the ball to get to the outfield grass. Swing and a miss, 0 and 2. Johnson getting a couple of fastballs by Holiday to jump out in front. Lance Berkman waiting on deck for the Cardinals. You know, there's nothing wrong with Holiday. There's nothing wrong with Berkman. But when you can't sandwich that name, Pujols in the middle, mm -hmm. that's a big loss. The highest scoring team in the National League last year, the Cardinals. Figured to be a very good offensive team again as Holiday takes inside. And 37,000 and change grown collectively. They wanted that first Marlins Park strikeout. Show you more, tell you more about the ballpark over the course of the night. The roof is open here tonight. They opened it about half an hour before game time. There's the man with the first hit in this ballpark. Mr. Holiday at the plate doesn't want to be the first K. One two swung on lifted high in the air to right field Stanton is there for out number two. Everybody just wants to get their first out of the way yeah. so you can get into the grind of the season as exciting as opening day is you just want to get into the flow of the game. Sometimes that's a little harder than others always butterflies no matter how many opening days you've been at. Never if it never goes away. I don't I, I think you got to go get a different job. <laughs> yep You try yep. to explain it to people and it's impossible. Yep. Here's Berkman Had a great year last year, especially in the first half tailed off a little bit in the second half But then had a great October hit over 400 in the postseason Switch hitter batting for the left side against the right hitter oh. Johnson. He takes ball one You got to believe if he puts up the numbers he did last year. They're gonna be thrilled Moving from right field into first base to take the place defensively of Pujols with Beltran now in the outfield. Let's go Marlins the chant here into Miami is the 1-0 to Berkman taken outside ball two. It is really strange not to see Albert here. It is really strange as much as we knew and he signed and he's in Anaheim. It's just strange to walk around the St. Louis clubhouse strange to not see him in the lineup. 11 years with Pujols, 16 years with Tony LaRussa and pitching coach Dave Duncan. So, three enormous changes, really, for the St. Louis Cardinals. And last year they battled through everything, through thick and thin, a September that everybody will remember, and then an October that no one will ever forget. A swing and a liner to left center field. This ball is down. It'll be. Cut off by Logan Morrison. Around to third goes Beltron digging for second and safe. 
is Lance Berkman just beating the throw into second base. That didn't look that didn't look like he was going to be safe. <laughs> wow. Fought off a good pitch. Yeah, it was a good fastball in. He did a good job getting his hands inside and then driving that ball to the opposite field. And I think Berkman thought he had an RBI. That ball was going to make it to the gap, but the ball ate it up once it hits the outfield grass. Gave Logan Morrison a chance to really get to it as it curves back to him. And right here, throwing the ball to second. Berkman thought the ball would go towards home with a possible two-out double and a runner on first, but the ball came to second. He snuck in there. So second and third, two down for David Freeze. David Freeze, the hero of October for the St. Louis Cardinals. The local boy made good. The NLCS MVP, the World Series MVP. The two hits that nobody in St. Louis will ever forget from game six of the World Series. The triple to tie it in the ninth inning, the home run to win it in the 11th inning. You can see the patch on the left sleeve of the Cardinals World Series champions. They'll be getting their rings at their second home game next week. Swing and a miss. Two and one. When you see the highlights of last year's playoffs, you see David Freeze hit a lot of fastballs. He can catch up to a bullet. That little wrinkle right there, that slider, had him way out front. Drives the ball very well to the opposite field as the Texas Rangers found out in very painful fashion during the World Series. At the knees, two and two. Good luck. <laughs> you're, a, you're a fastball count, and he throws a fastball right there. He did exactly what everybody else does. Just stare at it and hope, hope the next one catches more of the plate. Liner to left field for a base hit. Beltron in. Berkman in. Freeze on his way to second. Two to nothing Cardinals here in the first. Oh, Oral, that number you talked about, them hitting the breaking ball. He left that one right middle, middle, asking to be hit. As good as his breaking ball is, this ball is right in the middle of the plate. Ouch. But watch the head. Head on the ball. But that's what they do with breaking balls that are in the middle of the plate. He was sped up from that fastball in that got called for a strike to get the count to two and two. And then this two out base hit on a hanging breaking ball. It pops the bubble of everything new here in Miami. Mm -hmm. They got to play the game. Two to nothing St. Louis. Now the catcher Yadier Molina. And a strike taken by Molina. Who in a strange sense may have benefited at least financially from Pujols leaving. Because then the Cardinals went outside of Molina to a five year deal. Worth $75 million, $15 million a year for the four time gold glover. 0 oh 2. Two outs and two strikes. Does that remind you of anything when David Freeze is at the plate? Absolutely amazing. The winter, the spring training, the holidays, and he's still not cooled off. A guy who almost gave up baseball a couple of times, actually walked away from it in college, took a year off, then went to a a junior college to resume his career. And several years later, makes the Cardinals. Finally gets healthy and owns October. One and two on Molina. Josh Johnson talked about his difficulties in first innings, and this is a first inning of first innings when you're opening a new ballpark, coming back from a, a nine start year where you were injured. He's been waiting for this day a long time, and the first inning has not panned out the way he dreamed it. Guy who last year, before he got hurt, before the shoulders started giving him trouble, seemed to be a, a no hitter waiting to happen. Seemed to be a threat to throw a no hitter almost every time he took the mound. National League Pitcher of the Month in April, but he didn't make it through May. The shoulder inflammation never resulted in surgery, and he said with a week to go in the season, if it would have been a week longer, he could have come back and at least had a start. The season ended too soon for him. A look back and the one two ground ball to second. Hitting over. Johnson though gives up a couple of runs on the base hit by David Freeze. 
Two nothing Cardinals going to the bottom of the first. Jose Reyes will lead it off for the Marlins. Opening night baseball on ESPN is presented by Burger King. Try the new line of real fruit smoothies and is it frappe? I wouldn't know. At I'm Burger from Western King. Pennsylvania. We don't <laughs> pronounce that anyway. <laughs> Two to nothing. The Cardinals lead the Marlins as we go to the bottom of the first here in Miami. Jose Reyes, the biggest splash of all of them all down here. In South Florida, six years, 106 million for one of the game's most dynamic players. On well, the National League batting title a year ago, hit 337. And again, if you're a Marlins fan, you're just saying to yourself, can he stay healthy? Let him stay healthy because if he can stay healthy, he is still one of the game's great attractions and great performers. Freeze weighing on the grass at third. And the first pitch to Reyes in for a called strike. Speed at the top of the order, Terry, after Reyes, Emilio Bonifacio, and then Hanley Ramirez. And of our uh, chat with Ozzie Guillen before the game is any indication, everybody better be ready to run this year. You know, those three guys at the top of the lineup, they, they all want to run, and Ozzie wants them to run. Fly ball hooked down the line, and well back out of play of all in two strikes. We're talking before the game how quick Kyle Osh is to the plate. Ozzy didn't care. He's like, we're still going. Because if they throw us out, he goes, we'll go again. He said everybody needs to be ready to run except the pitcher. And if you're a pitcher and you're on, you're a base runner. You're not a pitcher. One, two, and a little chopper foul. Hey, he talked a lot about playing against Pudge Rodriguez. And Hanley Ramirez wants to run. He's going to be there at the top of the order. Moved over to third base this year. But when Ozzie Guillen would talk about running, he said, I'm not going to shut the running game down just because they have a great pitcher on the mound that holds runners and a great catcher because they're not going to change our game. And our style is going to be aggressive. And we're going to do it until they throw us out. And then we're going to do it again. Oh. Now saying that, over the last two years, the league has stolen two bases off Kyle Oates. That to me is an <laughs> incredible stat. High fly ball to shallow right. Beltron, one down. Time now to take a look at the Miami Marlins starting lineup brought to you by Can Am. And as mentioned, Jose Reyes leading off the National League batting champion a year ago, and he has become good buddies in a hurry with a guy that he displaced and moved over to third base, Hanley Ramirez, a former batting champion himself. And Hanley is happy and healthy, and in Marlin country, that's good news for a guy who is one of the most talented players in baseball. Ayalosha, 14 game winner last year, is on the mound for the Cardinals tonight. 
Oh. As Emilio Bonifacio takes a strike. Oral, what do you like about Loesch's year last year? Well, he's turned it around. He used to have forearm stiffness that took surgery to take it away, and last year he capitalized on that freedom, keeping the ball down. More two seamers than four seamers now, getting a lot of ground balls. Set 14 wins. That led the starting staff. That had Chris Carpenter. His ERA also led the starting staff at 3.39. Ground ball to short. Got to hurry everything on Bonifacio, and they get him by a couple of steps for a call. Still with that strong arm. Two down for Hanley Ramirez. There was a lot of concern about whether Ramirez would accept the the move to third base, and Ozzy, Ozzy's the best. The 15 minutes with Ozzy's as good as it gets. How about when he says? How about when he says, Hanley, you, you're going to play third base. You yeah. can play it happy. Yeah. You can play it mad. you got two choices. And you might as well play it happy. <laughs> thought that was beautiful. It's going to be easier to play it happy. <laughs> Ozzy has a way of cutting right to the chase. But then right after that, Ozzy said, don't, don't give me any of the credit. He said, give Jose Reyes the credit. Give Hanley the credit. And another guy that deserves some credit is Joey Cora. Yes. Ozzy's bench yes. coach. He's in there every day doing something with him. Marlins bringing in not only Jose Reyes, also Mark Burley, who's been with Ozzy for so many years in Chicago. Heath Bell, now they're closer. Carlos Zambrano picked up in a trade with the Cubs. The Cubs still paying most of the salary. It's a, a brand new ball game down here in Miami. And a pop up for for call to end the inning. Loesch gets him in order. Two to nothing St. Louis at the end of one. One of the unique attractions here at the Marlins Park. They have two fish tanks in foul territory right behind home plate. One just off to the left, one just off to the right. You can see one of them to the left of your screen right there, and it's shatterproof glass. We hope so. Bulletproof glass. <laughs> Bulletproof glass. And it's two layers. We hope so. <laughs> and there is probably 
the most talked about feature of this ballpark. They're just calling it the home run sculpture. Woo! Liner back to the mound. Jay retired as Johnson comes up with a grab. They just came out of pitchers fielding practice PFP in spring training and that would be called a redeemer when the pitching coach is hitting bullets back at you to get your reactions you catch one of those it's a redeemer you get to cancel off one of your errors oh my gosh that brought back memories or should I say nightmares <laughs> wow wow that ball might have caught him yep here's Daniel Descalso getting a start at second base tonight for the Cardinals. Scalso and Tyler Green going to share some time at second base this year for St. Louis. We mentioned the sculpture out in deep left center field. When the Marlins hit a home run, it's going to go into action. Spouting water, the Flamingos, the Marlins will swim around. You can see the skyline of downtown Miami, too. They can close the windows or open them. The panels are open right now. The roof is open right now. But even when the panels are closed, you'll be able to see the skyline of Miami. As the pitch is taken outside ball four. And also, if you're a fan of lime green, if that's your favorite color, you have come to the right place. It, it's amazing the difference in cultures. And, yeah. I mean, I'd like to see him put that left field sculpture up inside Fenway. <laughs> <laughs> but as Jeffrey Loria, the owner of the, of the Marlins, says, he goes, hey, this is Miami. And they didn't try to go retro here. They went modern. Art Deco, futuristic, throw to first and just back in time, the Scalso. And it, it's green and blue and pink and orange and yellow. It's a, it's a, this is a bright ballpark. I don't know about you guys, but it works for me. I think it's a beautiful ballpark. I think they did a great job. From the outside, it kind of looks like a, a cruise ship had a baby with a, you know, a spaceship. <laughs> it's taking me a second on that one. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just the beginning of the year. Low squares to bunt and gets it down. Johnson looks at second, settles for the out at first. The sacrifice moves to Scalso to second, two down. Dan, I'll let you pick it up from here. Uh, you want me to save this? You got us. Well, this, when, he, the, when it's closed, it yeah, looks like a spaceship. And then along the side, when you're pulling up, the glass, the beautiful glass, when it's closed up, looks like a cruise ship mm -hmm. that's been docked here off the Atlantic. And we are in the little Havana section of Miami. We're right on the site of where the old Orange Bowl used to be, the, the famous football stadium. Natural grass, retractable roof, 37,400 or so capacity. So it's an intimate place. It's not a huge ballpark. Here's for call up for the second time. I think it was a smart choice to make it smaller, not bigger. The 37,000, make a seat, something that you really have to compete to get. Makes it a lot of fun to come to the ballpark and see the place packed and have energy. And it sure would be good for Major League Baseball if oh. Miami becomes a hotbed. Well, building the new ballpark, having a roof and possibility of air conditioning, Mr. Laurie has done a great job. It feels like a new franchise. You know, they won two world championships here as the Florida Marlins. Now the Miami Marlins are starting a new era. New faces and a new place and a new era for Miami baseball. And the timing's pretty good as well. They went out and spent a lot of money at the same time when it appears maybe that the Phillies, you know, with the injuries to Utley and Howard, the Phillies might not be quite the 102 win juggernaut that they were last year. Uh, you just never know how they'll respond. But Utley and Howard are out for a while, and that might bring them back to the pack. And the National League East got, got more, you got interesting all the way around. Yep. They're really compacted. You know, you're probably going to have to put the Mets in the cellar. That's, a, that's quite a clip. That's a ring, ring right wow. there. He combined both years. <laughs> As we mentioned, the Cardinals will get theirs at their second home game. And we've been told by a couple of people who work for the organization that they're thrilled. They look beautiful, and they're they're all excited to get them a week from Saturday. Strike taken. Full count on for call. You can put the Nationals in the hat. You can put the, the Marlins in the hat. You put the Phillies in there and the Braves. And you, 
kind of pull one out, you come up with reasons of why they should win or why they should not win. And I guarantee you today, the New York Mets think they're in the hat. Every team yeah. on opening day feels like they have a chance, as they should. Ground ball up the middle and through. The Scalso around third. He'll come in to score on the RBI single by for call as the Cardinals have taken a three to nothing lead. Johnson has hung a breaking ball. He's given up a few hits on fastballs. The location's just not there. He's getting the ball in the area, but this infield, that ball got through in a hurry. And what they have with a dome stadium that can be closed, plus the heat of Miami and the possible rain, they're going to want to grow this grass a little longer, but they're going to have to figure out how to keep it alive as they go there. So right now they're staying short, and it's like a billiard table out there. The speed is slightly above major league average, I would say, on this infield, if not a little bit faster than that. And it's not like Wrigley or Fenway where they can grow it and make it soupy. You worry so much about guys heading north and having that first couple weeks that where you can't get a ball to go through the infield. That's not in play here. <laughs> this is still a spring training site almost as far as speed. Beltron takes a strike. And they will work at it. This is the, the kind of the, I don't what do you want to call it, growing pains, but it's part of the way of just adapting and the, the big league coaching staff and Ozzie Guillen, they will put their two cents in and they'll get it right in a month or two. So much was made of for call in spring training. Having is just not being able to to run and get going be interesting here to see with two outs if he, if he wants to go if he feels good enough opening day if his legs feel good enough to go and try to steal a base the Cardinals were last in the National League in stolen bases last year and for Kyle historically as you mentioned Terry I mean it, there was a time when he was good for 30 or 4 bases a season. 77% career success rate. Being held on by Sanchez at first. Bluffs a start. And a little swinging bunt to the left side, and it's going to roll all the way into left field. For a call into third, as that ball somehow snuck between Ramirez and Reyes, and there are runners on the corners with two down. Well, there'll be some communication issues over there. There'll be some thoughts about what balls I should go for, what balls I shouldn't for Hanley Ramirez and Jose Reyes. And this is one really a little communication mix-up kind of scoots through. Reyes kind of scooting over, thinking about the stolen base, and he feels out of position for call. Remember, bluffed the steal, and that got Reyes moving over, and Hanley just didn't get a real good jump on this, and I'm not sure he would have thrown Beltron out anyway. <laughs> And so it begins. Huh? <laughs> 161 more. <laughs> Ground ball for Ramirez. The short way, and the inning is over. Another run for the Cardinals. Ozzie Guillen and the Marlins down three to nothing. Going to the bottom of the second.
Gateway to the Americas. Puerto Rican, Cuban, Colombian, cultured and creative, proud and patriotic, Miami, Latin American, all American. And welcome back inside Marlins Park, the new home of the Miami Marlins. Dan Schulman to Terry Francona, Oral Hershiser, Buster Olney. As we begin our coverage of the 2012 season, three to nothing, the Cardinals lead the Marlins here in the bottom of the second. A swing and a miss by Jean Carlos Stanton. And the count is 0 2. This is Orange Bowl Plaza outside of one of the gates here at Marlins Park. Again, we are on the side of the former Orange Bowl. As Stanton sends a towering fly ball to center field and caught about 400 feet away. On the warning track by John Jay. This is a big ballpark, and that's a strong man, but he couldn't get it out of here. They've talked about how the ball doesn't carry here with the roof closed and the windows closed. Now we have the roof open and the windows open, and that ball looked like it got knocked down a little bit. So the prevailing wind might be coming through the windows in left field right now. That's a strong young man that hit that ball. Yeah, that ball was crushed. <laughs> Here's Logan Morrison, the Marlins left fielder, both Morrison and Stanton. And yes, you know him as Mike Stanton, but his actual first name is Giancarlo. And he wants to be known this year as Giancarlo Stanton. His dad calls him Mike. <laughs> hey, he's 6'5", 245. If he says call me Giancarlo, it's Giancarlo. Exactly. But you just got to keep your distance if you call him the wrong name. He has enormous power. Giancarlo Cruz Michael Stanton is his full name. Logan Morrison lines one to right field and Beltron didn't have to move a bit. Two loud outs here in the second inning. Well, they know they're going to get a strike on the first pitch. Kyle Loesch is a strike thrower and especially very efficient on the first pitch. Last year 67.3%. That led the NL starters, and so you know you're going to probably get a heater early. And those two young fastball hitters tried to feast on it. Loesch came up lucky. Gabby Sanchez, the first baseman, looks at a strike. One wind caught, and one Beltron caught. Hmm. By the way, the commissioner of baseball, Bud Selig, is here in attendance tonight, and he will join us in the booth next half inning. We'll talk to him about this beautiful new park and. State of the Marlins and a lot of things to talk to Commissioner Seal about the expanded playoff system, the sale of the Dodgers. Let's talk to him about why he didn't expand last year. <laughs> <laughs> One ball, two strikes. What a nice man. He he loves the game. Sure does. He's so proud when the game is good. And he's always there. His door is always open. His phone is always answered. It's uh, it's fantastic the way he reaches everybody in baseball. Did you tell me, Terry, that both you and your dad finished up your playing How about careers that? in Milwaukee? My dad right. finished up in 1970, and I finished up in 1991. Mr. Selig finished us both off. <laughs> <laughs> 1970. That was the first year for the sure, Milwaukee Brewers. It sure was. Right? It came from Seattle. Yeah. Line to second, and that's all for the Marlins. Here in the second. The inning is over. Three to nothing Cardinals. Beautiful park. Good eats here in Miami. Commissioner of Baseball will join us when we come back.
Baseball on ESPN is brought to you by MLB 12, the show. So real, it's unreal. And by the 2012 Ford F-150, built Ford Tough. Back here to Miami at Brand New Marlins Park. It's the Cardinals 3 and the Marlins nothing as we go to the top of the third inning here on opening night. Aerial coverage of tonight's game is provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned of making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. Back here in Miami, Dan Schulman, Terry Francona, Oral Hershiser, and the Commissioner of Baseball, Bud Seeler. Commissioner, thank you, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Dan. Pleasure to be here, Terry, yeah. Oral. Yeah. This is, I've looked forward to this, uh, frankly, for the last five or six months, so this is a great night. Kind of old home break. Yeah, it really is. Talking to a lot of the people in the in the Marlins organization, Commissioner, they all said as much as they hoped for in this ballpark, it has exceeded their expectations. As Absolutely. Bergman begins the inning with a ground ball, one down. What, what was your first impression when you walked in here? Today? Well, you know, I saw it a year ago, Dan, uh, almost a year ago to the day. Jeff Loria took me around, and it looked, this is spectacular. I mean, this really, uh, the more I've walked around today and looked at everything, uh, it's a long way from Joe Robbie Stadium. <laughs> Just right, like I'm old Milwaukee you. County Stadium. Well, that, that, now, now you're getting close. You bet. You bet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Milwaukee County Stadium and Joe Robbie were in the same class. <laughs> David Fries is the batter. He's already got a two-run single here tonight. Uh, he, picked, he picked up where he left off last year. Exactly year, right. right. What a surprising and great year we had last year with all of baseball. Yeah, well, it was... Um, it was really spectacular. The last um, playoffs, World Series. Uh, I was going to say the last month oh, of the season. You know, Mr. Feeling. <laughs> <Like, laughs> no, I, I, I hesitated because I tell you, I've been friends for a long time. It really wasn't that spectacular. <laughs> In fact, we were talking before you came up here. Did you ever think about doing it last year? <laughs> <laughs> well, You're talking right. about the Incident one game playoff? expanded, expanded playoffs. Yeah. Incidentally, I, I have to say a little. There's Freeze sending one into center that drops in for a base hit. Really picked up where that. I want to say as a note of great history here that my first year in owning the Brewers, I had um, Terry's dad played for me, and then Terry played for me 19 years later. So um, that was a, just a little note of You Brewers. finished us both off. You, 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 we both ended our career there. I'm not going to talk about your dad, but you finished yourself off. <laughs> You're a better baseball man than I thought. <laughs> Runner at first, one out for Yadier Molina. 3 nothing Cardinals at the top of the third. The commissioner of baseball, Bud Selig, joining us. Well, we alluded to the expanded playoff format. I think it's something that, at least from the, the people I talk to, the vast majority of baseball fans seem in favor of. How important was it to you to put in that extra Very, runner? very important. You know, just to go back, you remember 1993 when we went to the wild card. I took a lot of pounding in those days for... A lot of people said we're ruining baseball. Now, of course, everybody loves it. We debated this the last three or four years in great, really in great detail. And the more we debated it, the more I realized, look, 30 teams to have 10 in the playoff is not an unreasonable number. It's a fair number. And the one criticism of the old system that I always took to heart was that you didn't get enough credit for winning your division. The, the wild card team had really had more of a chance so now you would agree you win your division you have a tremendous advantage mm -hmm. so this is important and i told our guys we got to get it in this year we did and, and i'm looking for it and it'll be a one game playoff you between bet. the two wild card teams is is that the way it'll stay in the foreseeable yes season? it will you know dan is interesting because um i am um, i really wanted two out of three i i kept thinking to myself having run a team and Terry, remember how I lived and died every game, but um, it didn't strike me as fair, but I have the 14-man committee, which we had the four managers, and much to my surprise, the four managers of Joe Torrey, Sosha, uh, Jimmy Leland, and, um, and um, uh, Tony La Russa, Tony La Russa yeah. Yeah, um, all wanted a one game, and so did the general managers and the owners and everybody else. And the more I talk to everybody else in baseball, they were content with the one game. So it's one and out. How exciting to start the playoffs off with a game seven right away. You bet. It's going to be amazing. You bet. And I think, well, that really will set up the whole playoff system. Yeah. You bet. It really sets it up. You're pretty much guaranteeing 
starting the playoffs how we ended last year. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. It'll be exciting. Commissioner Bud Selig joining us here. Uh, the big news in the last few days, I guess, around baseball is the sale of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Uh, I know you've got to be thrilled just to tie a bow on that and, and, and move forward. Uh, what that, that's th true. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what are your thoughts on, on the Dodgers moving forward and how they regain their place that they've always held? In well, you know, that's right. The Dodgers are all will know well having played there all these years, but um, Double play. Can you stick with us another half inning? Commissioner Sealer will stay for another half inning. Three nothing Cardinals going to the bottom of the third. Opening night here at Marlins Park. The Cardinals leading the Marlins three to nothing as we go to the bottom of the third inning. Kyle Loesch on the mound for St. Louis and Omar Infante is the batter. Tonight beginning momentarily across town on ESPN2 NBA action as LeBron James and the Miami Heat take on the Oklahoma City Thunder. The NBA on ESPN2, ESPN3 and also live on WatchESPN.com. So Miami is the place to be tonight. As a baseball fan, as a basketball fan, going through the count on Infante, an all star a couple of years ago with Atlanta. Checks the swing on the appeal. He held up. Ball one. Dan Schulman, Terry Francona, Oral Hershiser with the commissioner of baseball, Bud Selig, again this half inning. And Mr. Commissioner, we started talking about the sale of the Dodgers. Can you talk about where you see that franchise headed in the future? Well, I, look, it's, it, it's one of our great franchises. You think of the whole Dodger franchise in Brooklyn and in Los Angeles and all the great people that played for it, including Mr. Hershiser, and great market. It's just, there's no question you get the right group in there. Uh, there it, it's a franchise with enormous potential, so I'm, I'm I'm pleased I've spent a lot of time in the last year, and uh, frankly, I'll be grateful to move on. And and similar asking price to when you purchased the Brewers in 69? <laughs> no, I'll tell you a story about that. We bought the Brewers for um, $10.8 million, and my father asked me if I was crazy. <laughs> now, what would he say today? Oh, you know, my he, goodness. Yeah, you could get that. a shortstop for one <laughs> year. Exactly. If you're lucky. Well, you've <laughs> got to be very happy that under your tenure that baseball, the economy is good. We're healthy. You've seen so many great stadiums built in your career. 
Well, you know, Oral, it's interesting. The sport really, by any measure today, has never been more popular. We're, we're, we're going to have a tremendous attendance here this year. Um, I really think we're going to show a, a remarkable increase right here as a great right. example. And um, by any criteria that you want to use, it's more popular than it's ever been. And I, I'm proud of where the game is. Labor peace now for 21 years is really going to help us, given all the heartache that we all had for many, many years. And uh, everything is just really remarkably good. I think we ought to have great races. I spent a lot of time on airplanes, and I keep going over it. And really, I, I'm, I don't think I'm being overly optimistic. I think we get a chance to have, have a great race in almost every division. So... Yeah, I'm proud of where the game is right now. We have peace, and um, I always tell the owners, when you focus on the game on the field, you're doing great. It's, when you get off that, that's when trouble rears its head, and we don't have that now, so uh, I'm proud of where we are. You still get butterflies as commissioner on opening day? Is that still a... As a commissioner, yeah. I get butterflies on a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I can tell you. I wish I could have a day where I didn't get butterflies, and we'd be doing fine. Yeah. And sometimes it's worse, Terry, than butterflies. <laughs> I think I've been on the end of one of those, two of those I'm phone calls. I'm sure you have. Yes, you have. The inning is over. I huh? was pretty kind with you, though, wasn't I, Ola? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Seelig, thank Man, you for nice joining us. Let's all have a great Thanks, Mr. Seelig. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner of Baseball, thank Bud Seelig. 3 nothing Cardinals at the end of three. Welcome back to opening night baseball on ESPN presented by Burger King. We go to the top of the fourth inning a beautiful night here in Miami the roof open at New Marlins Park the Cardinals lead three to nothing as John Jay looks at a called strike from Josh Johnson to get the inning going bottom third of the lineup for the Cardinals Jay Daniel Descalso and then Kyle Loesch. Tomorrow more. Baseball coming your way. ESPN 2 has an opening day doubleheader. Oral and Terry and Buster and I will be at Comerica, Detroit. The Red Sox taking on the Tigers. You'll also see the Marlins and Reds at 4 Eastern time as Jay flares one into left field for a base hit. Big turn, but he'll stop with a bloop single. 
Then Friday, also a doubleheader coming your way on ESPN2 at 7 Eastern. Two teams that figure to battle all season long in the National League West, the Giants and the Diamondbacks. And then at 10 Eastern, it'll be the Royals and the Angels, the home opener for Albert Pujols as an Angel. And again, Oral and Terry and Buster and I will be at that game. So we are getting to see America and see in ballparks and see in opening days all over the place over the next few days. I've ordered my eyelid toothpicks <laughs> <laughs> to keep my eyes open. See, and Terry, you thought you signed up for Sunday night baseball. You didn't realize you signed up for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday night baseball. You know, they said take a year and help be an analyst and <laughs> relax a little bit. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> Runner at first, nobody out. Descalso the batter. And we have no DL. You know, there's no, no. DL here. There's no. no coming up, somebody taping your ankles or taking care of you. I know as a player, I, I never could play a day game after night game. We'll see about <laughs> talking into a microphone. <laughs> you we'll could play it. They just didn't write your line. <laughs> so they the didn't let me play it. <laughs> we'll find out bright and early tomorrow. Going to be Justin Verlander and John Lester in the game between the Tigers and Red Sox in Detroit's home opener, one Easter tomorrow on ESPN two. And Johnny Cueto for Cincinnati, Mark Burley for Miami. I almost did it. I almost you, you, you sure you did. Felt it. Uh -huh. You felt it too. Sure did. We got a little wager going here <laughs> on who says Florida for who says the Florida Marlins first, and I just about did it right there. So that doesn't count. What that you doesn't just count. Did? No, 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 no. Oh. That doesn't count. A strike, two and one. And that matchup you're talking about tomorrow, Verlander and Lester. Wow. You know what? That's worth being a little bit tired. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. that'll be a fun game to watch. We should be on about three and a half hours sleep if we can sleep. That's that's a normal for a major league manager. Yeah. <laughs> Once the season starts. After a loss. Oh, you yeah. don't sleep oh, much. Oh yeah. Great story. Mike Matheny told us before the game. He said he slept great last night, but the night before his first spring training game, he woke up at about three in the morning, couldn't go back to sleep, so he went to the ballpark. He was at the ballpark yeah. by four in the morning. So many things, that, and Mike <laughs> was so open to talking to us about, you know. When to pick to go argue with the umpire, things yeah. like the things he's never done, and he's going to learn on the run. But he's so open about it, he's so honest, and he has such a good presence. Yes, a natural leader, always had that reputation as a player, and a guy who's been in and around the Cardinals ever since he retired. A roving minor league instructor here, go to spring training there, spend some time with the GM John Mosellock, learn that into the business too. He and Robin Ventura, two major league managers this year with no prior managerial experience at any level. Full count on Descalso. And again, I think it speaks volumes as to the kind of people they are. Let's see if Mike Matheny puts a play on here. Jay, decent speed at first, full count on Descalso. Sure, let him go. They got the lead. He is. And it's fouled back. Let's take a look now at some of the new faces in new places brought to you by Denny's. And Mike Matheny is in a very new spot. He's a major league manager of the St. Louis Cardinals. Ozzie Guillen, after eight years managing the Chicago White Sox, including a World Series championship in 2005, is now down here in Miami. Now signed a four year deal to be the skipper of the Marlins. Runner goes again. And it is strike three, throw down, double play. Well, Josh Johnson got his first strikeout. He had five hitters to two strike counts and couldn't put them away. That's his kind of stuff to be able to put people away. It shows that the location's a little off. The breaking ball's not quite there yet. But he gets a strike on a fastball low at the knees and a nice throw down there to second base. Reyes applying the tag there on the thigh. What does that change the momentum of, mm -hmm. of an inning in a hurry? Yep. You got three two count runner moving a good you know good hitters count. And all of a sudden you got bases empty and two outs and the pitcher hitting. And a ball and a strike on Loesch, who had a sacrifice his first time up and has set down all nine hitters he has faced so far. Breaking ball line softly to second, and just like that, the inning is over.
to the bottom of the fourth. Top of the order, Jose Reyes, who's sure to have a bobblehead night here soon in his honor. He'll lead it off when we come back. It's April, and there's hope, because there's baseball. Thank God. How about sums it up? Everybody, and you said everybody puts their name in the hat early. Everybody's optimistic. Terry, everybody thinks they've got a chance. And that's the way it's supposed yep. to be. The Mariners and A's are one and one. If people don't know, they played two games in Japan last week, regular season games, and they came back and they'll get their seasons started shortly. But this is the opening game, the first game here in North America as we open it up in Miami with the Cardinals leading the Marlins three to nothing. And as the commissioner said when he was here, he thinks there has a chance to be a, a great race in almost every division. I think people look at the American League Central and say, boy, the Tigers. Look tough, and are any of the other teams ready to contend this year? But you look at the American League West, what a battle it could be between the Rangers and the Angels. Reyes lifts a fly ball to center. One down. The American League East looks like it may have as many as four teams who might have very good seasons this year. The National League East, we've talked about a little bit, the improvement of the Marlins and the Nationals. Uh, NL Central. Who knows? Uh, I mean, the Cardinals lost Pujols, the Brewers lost Fielder, the Red, Red signed Votto. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Reds <laughs> did they ever? <laughs> <laughs> did they ever? But they just lost their closer, Ryan Madsen, for the season. And then National League West, uh, Arizona, the champs from last year, San Francisco with all the pitching, Colorado kind of a trendy pick in some corners this year. Looks like it's going to be a fun year. You think the Dodgers will probably get to retool mid-year if they're in it? Mm -hmm. with all the money that was spent and the, the goodwill. Bonifacio squares to bunt and the pitch hit him. And Molina, I think, is acting asking, did he get the bat out of the way in time? And the ruling on the appeal down to third, Ed Hitcox is saying he did. Because a swing will overrule being hit by a pitch of greater concern right now is that Bonifacio is shaken up. Well, that's the first runner to reach base against Kyle Lowe. She had retired 10 in a row. Right here, he's squaring around the bunt and see if there's a motion. Yep, he pulls it back towards the shoulder, and as he's doing that, doesn't have time to get his back left leg out of the way. How's that feel, Terry? You know, they need base runners, <laughs> but boy, that's a that's a heck of a way to get on there. That'll leave a mark. Hey, you hope he's okay, but 
If it slows him down a little, he's just down to big league fast mm -hmm. instead of lightning. Stole 40 bases last year, tied for second in the National League, and, and that's with not quite a full time player's worth of at bats. He is always a threat. But as Tito mentioned, Kyle Loesch has only allowed two stolen bases against in the last two years with him on the mound, and Molina's got a cannon behind the plate. Be interesting to see how they they go after Lowe's the second time through the order because that first time through the order he was efficient, no base runners. He followed the glove, took the sting out of the bat. Just all the things he talked about he needed to do, he did very very well. Anley Ramirez popped up his first time up. Runner not going, and it's in for a strike. Now there are the signs from Ozzy and you. We got some great. Inside baseball stuff from Terry in the meeting with Ozzy before about when Ozzy really wants a guy to run. He's got a special sign, and your detective skills must be really great. Well, he, <laughs> he did it to us a few times. He he just waves them on over. Swing and a ground ball to third, to second one, to first. Double play. Way to hang in there at second by Descalso as they turn the 5 4 3 to win the inning. Mark just behind home play. As for Call, slaps a bunt toward third, testing Ramirez and safe at first for Call. I'm surprised Ozzy didn't come out and argue that he was out of the box. I feel for Call showing that the the legs aren't that old. He's been doing that play for a while and sometimes he even cheats on it gets outside the box as he comes. Second hit of the game for for call lead off man aboard for the Cardinals here in the fifth the batter is Beltron who's two for two. Recall struggled in the spring although made some adjustments toward the end of the spring. Mike Matheny said and showed some progress. Need him to get on base for the likes of Beltron, Holiday, Berkman, and Freeze, the meat of the order. Yeah. 
I mean, this is the way they drew it up. They got an early lead. They got their leadoff hitter on that can run. You got a left-hand hitter that can use the hole. He can also run. And you got your big boys coming up next. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are assuming the Cardinals take a big step backwards offensively without Albert Pujols. And obviously there, there's something to be said for that. But for call could be better. Uh, Freeze could play 150 games instead of 97. They, they've got some hitters. Do you get the feeling, just a little feeling, that they're kind of having a good time with this? Like we're going to show people mm -hmm. that we can do this. Sure. Two balls and a strike. Time now for better, stronger, smarter. Brought to you by Mazda. And there are the big boys Holiday, Berkman, Freeze. Can Berkman repeat last year? Can Holiday stay healthier and improve on last year? And can Freeze stay healthy, play 150 games? And let's see what the numbers are at the end of the season. Sometimes there's a tendency on a team to relax and just watch the big boy hit. And now there's a little more pressure on everybody else, and they're going to take every at bat a little bit more seriously. And that focus and that challenge, now these are some pre professionals that want to rise to it. Swing and a miss, two and two. Remember the Seattle Mariners in 2001 won 116 games? No Griffey, no A Rod, no Randy Johnson. Those guys had moved on by that time, and they just had a 1 through 25 team good solid players at least good solid players at every position and they had an extraordinary season and they showed up every single day mm -hmm. they never took a day off just as interesting I think it is the mentality of the Cardinal clubhouse without Tony La Russa there because he was a pedal to the metal intense 162 games all season long from the beginning of March right through to the end of October and Mike Matheny's got a much different personality. He's an intense guy, but in a in a much different way. There's a new pitching coach, of course, Derek Lilliquist, who was the bullpen coach, takes over for Dave Duncan, who was there forever. So Should a lot a of running stories. Count. Yeah. Running count here. There he goes. Swing and a miss. Throw down and safe at second is for call. Beltron strikes out. Let's go down to Buster Olney. Dan, I talked to Matt Holliday before the game, and he said he actually finds Matheny to be a lot like Tony La Russa in terms of their personality. He said that Matheny spent a lot of time this spring developing relationships, going around the field during batting practice, circling in the outfield, talking with players as they were going through fielding practice. He really feels like that he's made inroads in developing that relationship with the players. All right, Buster, thank you. Terry, what do you think? You had managed in the minors before you managed in the majors. If you can put yourself in Mike Matheny's shoes, never having managed baseball at any level before, what do you think his toughest challenge will be? You're you don't have the chance to make mistakes at a, in a setting where it's not on Sports Center. <laughs> Here's Matt Holiday. Is it the is it the in-game stuff or is out? What we don't see is that that's just as hard. And it's how you handle situations, yeah. how you handle major league players. Uh, and, and the only way you get more comfortable is by doing it. Now, again, from every single report we've ever heard, this guy's special. There's a reason they wanted him to be their manager. Oh, and two. They saw the leadership qualities all the way back at the University of Michigan. Yep. His baseball coach there told him to take Spanish class as an elective all the way through because he said, someday you're going to manage in the big leagues, and I want you to be able to communicate with the Latin players. And he's fluent now, right? He's yep. fluent, and the coaching staff didn't even know he was fluent until one day they were sending down a Latin player to the minor leagues, and he started to talk to the young man in Spanish. And they looked over and they go, wow. Play on at second. Oh, oh and he had him. He was out. Say, saying all that, he's still going to see things for the very first time at the major league level, and he he admitted to it. He said he said the hose is on, and I'm drinking right out of it. <laughs> I think Rafael Furcal had aspirations of putting a little pressure on Hanley Ramirez playing third base for the first time, maybe trying to swipe third to see if Hanley could put the tag on, and got caught thinking about third base and not getting back to second. 
ran into Tony La Russa earlier before the game and talked to him about Mike Matheny and he said this guy's an oak. He's going to be fine. You know no game or not and he's been coming to spring training the last four years. He's been an associate general manager assistant to the general manager and been around. And they've gotten to know him very very well. I don't know if he's being groomed but he was being exposed. Longtime major league catcher whose career actually ended a little bit prematurely because of concussion issues as holiday is called out on strikes for out number two. Thirteen and hundred and five games as a player Mike Matheny but this one's a little different <laughs> your first game. And here you see Ozzy going to the mound. This is the Albert Pujols factor right here. Not being here. They're going to talk about either how to pitch to Berkman, maybe not to pitch to Berkman. But with David Freeze in the on deck circle with a two out base hit that scored two and a bloop single in a second at bat, it might be about let's not pitch around him, let's pick one of the two and get him out. If we fall behind and we don't want to give in, that's fine, but you might want to attack Berkman. And they're going to put him on, it looks like. That's one of the weaker attacks I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Berkman still commanding a lot of respect. So Freeze will get an opportunity. He's already two for two tonight with a couple of RBIs. I mean, this is Lance's side of the plate where he has all his power. 27 of his 30 home, 31 home runs came hitting left-handed. Mm -hmm. Ozzy's not going on those first two at bats. Mm -hmm. He's going on last year and the career. Ball four. So here's Freeze, the NLCS and World Series MVP. And as Commissioner Selig said when he was with us, he picked up right where he left off. He's got two hits and two RBIs already here tonight. The guy who the last couple of years had so many injuries, ankle injuries for the most part, and again only played in 97 games last year. Within the organization, they knew he had a chance to be special, but he never really got a chance, Terry, to show it. Until he got under the spotlight of October was healthy and hit 397 in the playoffs last year and they're hoping that it'll just springboard him into a full year of health which will lead to production. For college second Berkman at first two down. St. Louis already with eight hits through four and two thirds off Johnson, who normally Oral is about as stingy a starting pitcher as there is in baseball. A big six seven. You haven't seen the 97 mile an hour fastball, but he's touched 94, 95, and the, the breaking ball hasn't been as consistently sharp and devastating as it can be or was in the past. He's working some of the cobwebs out. Hasn't pitched since last May. Only got nine starts last year, but at a 1.64 ERA, was three and one. And he has all the potential in the world. This young man is 25 games over 500 in his career. Cy Young body, Cy Young stuff. It's just health. And there's a little stirring in the Marlins bullpen right now, in the left field corner. Nobody throwing, but. Three guys just got up and started stretching all at once. So Ozzy or perhaps his pitching coach Randy Sinclair, somebody got on the phone and said, "All right, guys, at least get in ready mode down there." You know he's up over 80 already. It's the first start of the year. Like Oral said, he hasn't started the game in almost a year. They're gonna they're gonna keep an eye on him. Swing and a miss. He got him to end the inning. Two men left on to the bottom of the fifth. Three nothing Cardinals.
Back to Marlins Park, one of the special features here, you, a pool out in the Clevelander, which is a bar on South Beach, and they have a, a smaller version of that bar, complete with pool here in the ballpark. As the commissioner said, this ain't County <laughs> Stadium. <laughs> Bottom of the fifth, three to nothing Cardinals with Oral Hershiser, Terry Francona, the newest member of our family here at ESPN, Buster Olney, I'm Dan Schulman. Opening night. Giancarlo Stanton skies one skies one and a shallow center for out number one as we send it back to Steve Berthium. Bert, thank you. Big night here into Miami. One out in the bottom of the fifth. The Marlins, by the way, are still looking for their first base hit of the night. They've had one base runner, Emilio Bonifacio, was hit by a pitch and then erased on a double play. So Kyle Loesch has faced the minimum through four and a third as he faces Logan Morrison. The left fielder, who likes Stanton, the right fielder, they're both battling sore knees. They both missed a big chunk of spring training. Both of them only came back about five, six days ago. Sounded like a weather report on the update. Heat and thunder in Miami. <laughs> but the roof is open here at the New Marlins Park. One and two. Don't figure it out. <laughs> just leave it alone, Tito. I'm just still, leave it alone. I'm still trying to figure that one out from spring training. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not turn. Let's not go back. The surging river. That's the a raging that a river, raging river. river. That's or a, a swamp. I'm just glad we're here alive after your driving escapades. <laughs> to center field. And again, a spacious ballpark. We watched BP yesterday. Both teams worked out here yesterday for about half an hour, and hardly anybody was even getting the ball to the warning track. Yet Ozzie Guillen told us there was one game they were playing a college team during spring training. The roof was open. He said the ball was flying. Well, ball goes farther off a college pitcher. That's true, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They got to get a little better to play yeah, here. Good point by you. And it's going to be a while. You know, as they get into the season, they're going to find out a lot of things about this new stadium. Gabby Sanchez, the batter. But talking to Ozzy, he said he is more concerned making it a pitcher friendly park than a hitter friendly park because if you pitch it and you catch it, you always have a chance. He will not worry about his offense. He's got a lot of speed, which will play well in a big park. Spoken like a true manager. <laughs> Maybe that's in the batter's eye a little bit. <laughs> Can you imagine if that was in the batter's eye? That's in my eye. They did a lot of work to make sure it wasn't. Yeah, I heard a little siren. It there. sounded like an alarm, alarm just went off. And we can see some flashing lights in some of the, the walkways. Whatever it was, they stopped it. And nobody seems too concerned about it because we're playing on here. We showed that picture of that swimming pool out there <laughs> by the Clevelander. And it set off all the lights. I think there is the uh, maybe the source of the siren that we heard as an ambulance is backed up. It's above the uh, the concourse down in the left field corner. Breaking ball down and away. Marlin fans would love to see somebody hit a home run and get that Marlin Flamingo palm tree structure going out there, but right now they probably just settle for a base hit. Their team doesn't even have a hit so far here on opening night. And only 55 pitches, so being very efficient. Very fortunate early on, but that's zero. That goose egg. There has been a base runner. Kyle Loesch hit Bonifacio. A little breaking ball off the back left knee when he's batting left handed. That's been the only base runner to reach. Again, yeah, nibbling for that outside corner with the off speed stuff. It's a full count. And I think everybody's waiting to see what kind of fans these people will be. You know, back at the old stadium, th there really weren't that many there. It was quiet. Now this place is full. Is it going to be loud or are they going to be, you know, kind of mm -hmm. laid back? Strike three called. Sanchez knew it. And the inning is over as Loesch continues to mow him down here in Miami.
All right, fellas, thank you. We go to the top of the sixth inning. Joined by Carl Krucky and Hall of Famer Barry Larkin here in Miami. The Cardinals leading the Marlins three to nothing. Yadier Molina is the batter. He is 0 for 2 on the night. Hooks one into left field for a base hit. Morrison was playing him over toward left center. Hustles over and holds him to a long single. MLB.TV baseball everywhere. Watch almost 100 live out of market games each week on your favorite devices. Visit MLB.TV for details. Leadoff man is aboard. Here's John Jay, one for two. Lined out back to the mound, then had a base hit into left field. Jay is the incumbent as we head into the season out in center field. Remember the, the Cardinals made the Colby Rasmus deal during the middle of last season, picked up four players. Really got a lot of help in that trade down the stretch and into the postseason. Only one player remains with the Cardinals from the Rasmus deal, and that's Mark Zepchinski, the left-handed reliever. But Jay's going to get a lot of time out in center field. And the people in the Cardinal organization, they're raving about this kid. They think he's going to grow into being a good, solid, everyday center fielder. Right now they've got some injuries. You just saw Skip Schumacher walk up the stairs behind Mike Matheny. He's a guy who can play out in center field, but he's on the DL with an oblique strain right now. And figures to be out several more weeks. Pitches oh. outside, two balls and a strike. Activity now with the Marlins bullpen. Left-hander Mike Dunn is up. Johnson has given up three runs on nine hits through five plus innings. And he's up third next inning. Fly ball left field. One down, Molina back to first. You got to believe he's, he's at 90, 90 pitches. This is going to be his last inning. But you sure, if you're Ozzie Gian, you'd love to see him get through the inning. He checking out the possibilities who the Cardinals have on the bench who he's got on the pen. It's a little different for him managing in the National League compared to the American League. Having to deal with the double switches and now my pitcher's actually hitting if I go get him now do I replace him with just a pitcher. The Scalso pulls a base hit through the right side. The tenth hit of the game for the Cardinals Molina up to second. A little fastball here and just a little location problem on a lot of pitches for Josh Johnson tonight. That's where all the hits are piling up. But remember, he's just getting back and getting his competitive legs under him. He had a, a nice spring training. No real big problems. He had a little blister problem at one time that their heart stopped a little bit for Ozzy Guillen when they had to go to the mound for that. But that cleared up very quickly, something he's had in his career. But Josh Johnson's out there after only getting nine starts last year and Really getting back into game situations, and I think if he can get out of this inning without any more runs, three to nothing, he'll call this a successful day. Low squares to bunt. They're in at the corners. Hanley Ramirez, another test here as a third baseman, as it's bunted foul. And we saw Josh Johnson come off the mound and talk to his third baseman Terry, because again, this is just another new situation for Ramirez at the hot corner. And normally, as as they're doing right here, the third baseman gives the signs to the infielders and to the pitcher. And Josh Johnson did a great job. It's frustrating as an infielder when you have to get your pitcher's attention. Josh is doing a terrific job here. And you're going to see teams test Hanley. Mm -hmm. You know, fake bunts, maybe a guy stealing with, with showing the bunt. Bunted right out in front of the plate. Snap a throw down to third, and they'll get the lead runner. And, and Hanley handled that like he's been out there a lot of years. He did a great job. He creeped in a little bit, but didn't get too far from the bag. They were charging at first, and then the weak bunt out in front. Snap throw from home, and he had plenty of time to get back and stretch out. Can't see it here, but he had taken a step in like he has to, and then with it, with, with his athleticism, he gets back very easily. There he is. Look at this. Jab step in. Yeah, that, now, that's a kid that's got spring training and six major league innings under his belt and he handled that like a veteran. 
And the Marlins take care of the lead runner as a result. So now first and second two down and back to the top of the order for for call. Call with a couple of hits in this game one of them a bunt single toward third base. This is a really big at bat in this game. Josh Johnson get off feeling pretty good about himself three nothing going into his next start. But the Cardinals can start to spread this apart. Caught out at second by Infante to save a run. Johnson gets out of it. It remains three to nothing, St. Louis. Opening night baseball on ESPN is presented by Burger King. Try the new line of real fruit smoothies and frats at Burger King. <laughs> and in part by Scott's. Feed your lawn. Feed it. We're learning new things every day here, Terry. You and me. A lot of culture. Josh Johnson and the Marlins trailing three to nothing as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. The Cardinals have ten hits tonight. The Marlins have none. Omar Infante will try to change that, but he'll look at a called strike from Kyle Loesch. 12 of 16 first pitch strikes from Loesch. Very efficient. Pitch counts low and yet to give up a hit. 0 oh 2. Last year, he walked 10 batters when nobody was on base. That's wow. a phenomenal stat where, like you said, he's attacking hitters and working ahead. Golf's one to center field. Jay right there, one down. Let's take a look now at three moments from prior to tonight's game, brought to you by the Three Stooges. The home run sculpture in action before the game. Brazilian dancers. Escorting the players out onto the field for the pregame introductions and the flash bulbs going off by the thousands here on the first pitch tonight. Opening night here into Miami, the new park for the Miami Marlins. Marlins Park. It's been a fun night, although once the game got going, the fans haven't had a whole lot to cheer about. By the way, off day, Arlington, Saturday, Stooges. What do you say, Terry? <laughs> Obviously, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Thought you were referring to us. <laughs> One and two, the count on Buck, the Miami catcher. Grounded out his first time up. Kyle Loesch, the big story here tonight on opening night. Tapper weekly hit back to the mound, and just like that, two down. 
Tim Sullivan, our producer for tomorrow night's game in Detroit, or tomorrow's day game, sent us the production schedule, and on there it said post-game highlights with the Three Stooges, and I thought he was talking about <laughs> us. I'm like, what is this thing? Could go either way, really. We got Chris Coughlin pinch hitting here. Yep. And batting for the pitcher, Josh Johnson, with two down. So Johnson's night comes to an end. Coughlin, a former rookie of the year. Now relegated to fourth outfielder duty for the Marlins. Johnson looking on for the dugout. He goes six innings, gives up three runs on ten hits tonight. And Coughlin looks at a good curveball in for a strike. Ozzy embracing Johnson in the dugout after his opening night performance as Coglin waves at another off speed pitch 0 and 2. About the two out two strike base hit in the first inning they gave up two. It's been a pretty clean outing for him. I think after not pitching since in, in a big league game with 37,000 opening the ballpark he did a fine job. And there's a lot of nights when you go six and give up three. They're shaking your hand and you're sitting on a win. Oh yeah. The difference between a good year and a great year for an outstanding pitcher like that is when the offense picks you up on these kind of nights. Hugging the line. Foul ball, says home plate umpire Ed Rapuano. I don't know if Kyle Loesch knows it. He probably does at this point, but a little exhale when he picked up the ground ball might have been that could have been the hit. You just never know what's running through your mind. You run over there, line. Let's get that. Oh, it was coming Ooh. back. And Ooh. he he did a big exhale at the end. He goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. That ball was coming back. Yeah. That was pretty close to the chalk there when he picked it up. <laughs> Time is called. When do you start thinking about it as a starting pitcher? Right about now. After the fifth. Because in your life you've thrown three, four scoreless innings and hitless ball a lot. Mike Matheny is replacing Tony Larusa. If that's not enough, he may, in his first <laughs> big league manager year game, have to make a decision on taking his starting pitcher out because of pitch count with a no hitter. <laughs> Welcome to the big leagues. <laughs> like you said, the Sports Center covering this one. Inning over. End of six, three nothing Cardinals. Seventh inning and welcome back to opening night baseball on ESPN presented by Burger King. Three to nothing the Cardinals lead the Marlins as we go to the top of the seventh inning here on opening night. 
at Marlins Park in Miami. Dan Schulman, Terry Francona, Oral Hershiser, Buster Olney, and left hander Mike Dunn coming into the game for Josh Johnson. Dunn's a left hander, went 5 and 6 with a 343 ERA in 72 appearances for the Marlins last year. Struck out better than a batter per inning. It'll turn Beltron around to the right side. And first pitch swinging, he pops one up right near the plate. Buck, good play, one down. The phrase in the dugout is a home run in a test tube <laughs> when you hit it like that. Could have struck the blimp on that one that's given us the beautiful shots tonight. Sold out better than 37,000 here in this ballpark on opening night. And John Buck now getting a little attention. Don't know if it's a, a physical issue or an equipment issue right now. Looks like equipment. When he tossed the mask off to yeah. catch the pop up, strap came loose. Ed Rapuano getting a little laugh with him back there <laughs> behind the plate. Here's Matt Holiday 0 for 3. Holiday is the only starter for the Cardinals tonight other than Loesch the pitcher who does not have a base hit in this game. On the corner 0 and 2. Walking through the clubhouse before the game. He we were talking to him and he was so happy that he was healthy. I think last year was such a struggle at times for him that and he wants to play so bad but it was just a struggle to perform. Well accounts he's taken on more of a leadership role as well. Invited some of the young prospects from uh, from the organization to come work out with him during the winter. Taking some of the younger guys under his wing David Freeze talks about how Matt Holiday's almost like a big brother to him. Strike three call. He's always had that reputation as being kind of a gym rat. And he wants to be at the ballpark all day and he just wants to play baseball and he's never lost sight of that. Well, he's working over Ed Rapuano <laughs> right now, the home plate umpire. <laughs> Eddie Raps had a low strike zone on fastballs with two strikes counts tonight. There's been a few guys that kind of turned and went back to the dugout, didn't like the height of the pitch. Two down for Lance Berkman, who also, like Beltron, turns around to bat from the right side. He'll take low ball one. The Cardinals are up three to nothing here on opening night in the top of the seventh inning. And the developing story is Kyle Loesch, the starter for the Cardinals, who has not given up a hit yet in this game. Through six innings, he has hit one batter. It was immediately erased on a double play, so he's faced the minimum through six. The Cardinals go quickly and quietly here in the seventh. Loesch is going back to work.
Opening night stateside here at Marlins Park. The Cardinals lead the Marlins three to nothing as we go to the bottom of the seventh. And the story is the man on the mound right now. Right hander Kyle Loesch who has not given up a hit through six innings tonight. Three runs on ten hits for the Cardinals. Loesch has hit one batter who was immediately erased on a double play. He hasn't walked anybody. Bob Feller as the only opening day no hitter in Major League history. Rapid Robert. That's a pretty young Bob Feller too. I think he broke in in 36 I want to say. And he broke in as a 17 year old. That's probably a 21 year old Bob Feller right there. Let me read you a Kyle Loesch quote. I'm trying to keep guys off balance. Keep the ball out of the middle plate and get them to hit it to someplace. Somebody weekly and hopefully. They will hit it at somebody. And he's certainly done that. The key for him is to get the ball out of the middle of the plate, especially a guy with this kind of speed and Jose Reyes, because he hits it weakly or sharply, he can find first base. And there it is. And finally, the fans here in Miami on their first night in their new ballpark finally get to cheer a base hit. They stayed out of the middle of the play most of the night, but this is a little hanging breaking ball. He added a curve ball last year and a change up for more of those. And right here, the little breaking ball stayed up and gave up that first hit. Let's go, Marlins. The chant here into Miami. The speedster Reyes aboard. Bonifacio is the batter. Boy, how the the vibe in this part just changed in the last 20 seconds, huh? Ball. Up and away, ball one. This whole place came alive. Yep. The step inside the bag at third is Freeze. Middle infielders a double play depth. Outfielders play Bonifacio a little bit to hit the ball the other way. A chopper. Speared by Loesch to second for the lead runner. They get the force on Reyes. And you watch here, it's not hit very hard. And watch for a call take it almost like a first baseman. He understands the score of the game. He's not trying to turn to take something that's not there. And they just want to stay away from a big inning. So Reyes forced at second. Bonifacio takes his place at first. And now the batter is Hanley Ramirez. Tonight, by the way, was Loesch's longest bid for a no hitter, longest start into a game before giving up a hit in his major league career. And he's only getting this start, it bears repeating, because Chris Carpenter. Is out with an injury. This was to have been Carpenter's start. But Carpenter's got a nerve problem affecting his shoulder. And Mike Matheny and company hoping they'll get him back at some point in May, but nobody really knows for sure right now. And by the time the Carpenter injury happened, they didn't want to mess with Adam Wainwright's schedule. Remember, Wainwright missed all of last season after Tommy John surgery, so they wanted to leave Wainwright where he was. It was Wainwright, the former 20 game winner? He'll get the home opener in his second start but they didn't want to move him two or three days around to get him in here tonight. So the next option was Kyle Loesch and he certainly made the most of it. A high fly ball to left field. Holiday with lots of room. Two down. Let's take a look now at some of the keys to the season for the St. Louis Cardinals brought to you by Scott's and for the Cardinals it you think about the starting pitchers Can Wainwright bounce back and become the pitcher he was two and three years ago and oral can Carpenter come back at some point and be what he's been over the years and Chris Carpenter is a huge loss Adam Wainwright they lost last year and that was a blow and everybody kind of crossed the Cardinals off but with Chris Carpenter out 
Remember, he was 4-0 in the playoffs, 2-0 in elimination games. He's the heart and soul of that staff. Wainwright's going to have to pick up where he left off before his injury, and that's the thinner version to the right of Adam Wainwright of Jake Westbrook, who's throwing the ball very well and got a new regimen for his body and eating better. And he had a great spring, so those two want to solidify the Cardinal rotation. It was a big loss losing Carpenter. A drive to deep right center. Jay racing back makes the catch. Stanton retired. The inning is over. End of seven. Still three to nothing. Opening night baseball on ESPN is presented by Burger King. Try the new line of real fruit smoothies and fraps at Burger King. A tour down South Beach, not too far from here. We're in the little Havana section of Miami. Marlins Park, the new home of the Marlins, who trail three to nothing. As we go to the top of the eighth inning, and the third pitcher of the night for the Marlins is right-hander Ryan Webb. Webb last year with the then Florida Marlins. Two and four with a 3.20 ERA in 53 appearances. He was picked up in an off-season deal prior to last season from San Diego. Ozzie Guillen was very happy with how the Marlins pitched in spring training. Said he had to send guys down to the minors, who hardly gave up a run through spring. And, and one young pitcher said to him, "Ozzie, what do I have to do to, to make the team?" David Freeze with a chopper towards short. Going to be a tough play. Reyes won't get him. And Ozzie said you have to get the commissioner to expand the rosters to 26 <laughs> or 27. Then you're fine. <laughs> Freeze aboard with his third hit of the game. That's a nice play, though. I know that's a base hit, but that's still a nice play. Look at this. Look at it. Just like hitting. Keep your eyes to the ball. Look how athletic he is thrown across his body. Frees the lead Molina the batter. Molina is always a candidate for a hit and run. Doesn't walk much. He's putting the bat on the ball. Pretty safe bet. You put a runner in motion, he's going to hit the ball and put it in, in and put it in fair territory. In the left field, a base hit. 
Freeze around second, heading for third. Molina on his way to second, beats the throw. A double for Molina, his second hit of the game, and two in scoring position with nobody out for the Cardinals. Tell you what, there's a lot of scouts writing down about the left field arm of Logan Morrison right now because he's had a few throws out there, and that's not a real strong arm. There's going to be some people trying to take some extra bases on him. And there's some ground to cover out there. There sure I mean, is. You, we have a great view of this. He makes his turn, he rounds it off, yeah. and then as he comes in there, just his footwork was kind of screwed again, up, took the velocity he, off know, the ball. He threw it accurately. but He's battling that knee a little bit, yep. and instead of being able to pivot and make the turn, he rounded it, and it cost him a couple steps, but again, he is battling that knee. Yep, and he's had to slow down before he goes in there to pick that up, take that pressure off that leg. And Ozzie Guillen had a left-hander up, and he's on his way out to the mound. So Webb's season debut doesn't last very long. Randy Choate will be coming in when we come back. Aerial coverage of tonight's game is provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. Beautiful aerial shots on this great night with the roof wide open here at the Marlins Park. The Cardinals leading the Marlins three to nothing, batting in the top of the eighth inning. Runners at second and third with nobody out. Forcing Ozzie Gein to his bullpen again. He brings in left-hander Randy Cho. His numbers from a year ago with the Marlins spent the two years prior to that on the other side of the state with Tampa Bay and put up some good numbers there a guy you've obviously seen a lot when the Red Sox played the Rays over the over the 09 and 2010 seasons and this is exactly why he's here to get a left hander out in a big situation infields halfway right now they for the might Marlins. charge here. Yeah. This is interesting. This is interesting where where hand uh, Reyes, the two middle infielders are playing. They might be about two steps too deep. Where if St. Louis decides to go in contact, I don't think they can throw him out at the plate. Freeze is the runner at third. Molina is at second. Especially Reyes at short. If there's a ground ball hit to him, I don't think they have a play. Back to the mound. The runners freeze. Ooh. And out at first. What a stretch there by Sanchez as Choate nearly threw it down the line. Well, Mike Matheny's decision that he relayed to Jose Akendo was that we're going to make the ball go through because neither Molina or Freeze really broke. This ball is right back to the mound. You freeze when it's on the mound. They were trying to make sure it went through, and Sanchez did a great job. Sticking his foot back on the base or keeping it on the base, back on the base. And 
And now Buck and Ramirez to the mound to talk with Cho. The MLB Fan Cave is back. This year, nine, nine cave dwellers will compete to remain in the cave until the final pitch of the World Series. Some of baseball's biggest stars are scheduled to visit and appear in Fan Cave videos. Check out all the latest cave happenings at MLBFanCave.com and follow at MLB Fan Cave on Twitter. You can also like the MLB Fan Cave on Facebook. The batter, Daniel Descalso. Breaking ball well outside, ball one. Scalso can play third, short, and second. He's starting at second base tonight. Tyler Green is a right handed bat who will get some time at second base this year, former first round pick. Not going to be a straight platoon. They're both going to get some time there. Descalso provides depth at a number of different positions. And if you're wondering why they're just not walking him intentionally, St. Louis has somebody up in the bullpen. If you walk him, you got bases loaded. It's not a lock that Loesch is going to hit. And you saw Salas up in the pen for St. Louis. Loesch on deck. You know, if you're Mike Matheny. You've out hit the the Marlins 12 to 1. And it's only 3 to nothing. I mean you're not feeling so comfortable right now because you've left a lot of guys out there. They've already stranded 7. But they're one hit away here from mm -hmm. yeah, separating themselves in this ball game. What? 3 and 1. Breeze led off the inning with an infield hit. Went to third on a double into left field by Yadier Molina. Jay grounded out. Now here's Descalso with a count in his favor. Weekly hit back toward the mound. The only play is for Cho to put the tag on Descalso, so he'll pick up an RBI. Free scores. Molina to third, four to nothing, Cardinals. With no out, they're making the ball go through. With one out, they're going on contact. And a good break for David Freeze to score that run. That's a situation there where the pitcher makes a really good pitch and doesn't get rewarded for it. Buster only just texted me that in David Freeze's last 96 at bats, including that special September and October, he's hitting 406 now with those wow. three hits. Loesch will bat. You know, I started tweeting a little more, Dan. And I've know, noticed. You guys, you know, and uh, I'm getting hammered right now because I jinx Kyle Loesch in the no hitter. They're like, you should lose your pitcher's fraternity card. I did it first. No, no, we all did we, it. But you know what? We don't have we, a fraternity. It's kind of news. We we don't <laughs> talk about it in the dugout. You, that's just a no no. Up of here course. You can. Oh, up here. Yeah. yeah, but you know, I don't know how you scold the fellow tweeters. <laughs> I'll show you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But you know what? That's a battle you can't win. I don't think you, you want to can't do win that. that battle. <laughs> Ground ball to second to end the inning. Another run, though, for the Cardinals. And we're going to the bottom of the eighth here in Miami. St. Louis leading four to nothing.
look at West Plaza here in Miami. Where Marlins Park opening night first regular season game for this. Nice new ballpark the retractable roof. New home of the Marlins. Bad news for the Marlins though is between the white lines it has not gone their way. They're losing four to nothing getting out hit 12 to one. They only hit a leadoff single in the bottom of the seventh inning by Jose Reyes. Logan Morrison. Leads off the bottom of the eighth inning. He's 0 for 2 tonight. Actually, Oral, if you want somebody to help you with Twitter, yeah. this is your guy. Oh, really? I mean, this is your guy. This guy is a, uh, he's a king on Twitter. And there was some discussion last year, actually. Remember they sent him down? They sent him down for a week. Really? During the season. And there was some discussion that they were unhappy with, not the baseball stuff, just... Was he behaving in the manner that a professional ball player should behave? You know, he's he's not shy to share his opinions on Twitter. I mean, he's he's going to give it to you. Ton of followers, doesn't pull any punches. Now nobody ever said whether yeah that's the reason or not. But Morrison sends one to deep right over the head of Beltron off the base of the fence, long single for Logan Morrison. Good throw by Beltron. Yeah. Morrison had already turned back to first. You know, it's it's actually a good pitch. Watch Morrison bring his hands in, just enough to get at the barrel of the bat to the ball. And he's a big, strong kid, and the bat takes the rest. Molina out to the mound. There's activity in the St. Louis pen. As Kyle Osh pitches here into the eighth inning, as you can see, 84 pitches on the night. Right-hander Fernando Salas is up in the pen. The Cardinal bullpen remember early last year was kind of a mess. I mean they weren't getting anybody out and blowing saves and Tony La Russa kept trying closer after closer. But by the end of the season the bullpen was great and was a big reason why they won the World Series. And, and I would think in another minute here if another guy gets on you might see. The lefty how do you say it Zepchinski. Thank you. And that's the, the Greg Dobbs factor. I think you're right. I think he might have just gotten on the mound. Dobbs is sitting over there in, in, in Miami's dugout. All eight home runs last year were against right handers. Yep. They're going to want to have an answer for him. There he is. You can call him what his teammates call him Alphabet? Scrabble. Scrabble. <laughs> if that's the case, I'm challenging on that name. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Zepchinski. You get a triple letter with a double word. Oh, you're you're you golden. Points. Yep. Two and zero the count. Gabby Sanchez the batter. Ball three. Something brewing here for the Marlins. Just the second three ball count tonight for Kyle Osh. Do you see any loss of stuff or anything at this point for Loesch? Been had such pinpoint control, especially keeping the ball to the middle of the play most of the night. The velocity's still up, the movement's still late. Still feels like he can throw any pitch at any time. He's had an outstanding game. This is not a fill-in for Chris Carpenter. This is an integral part of their rotation. They've just got an opening day start because of an injury. 14 wins 3.39 last year healthy finally had a spring where he could feel like he wanted to improve not just get his health back he hits a corner right there Sanchez thought he had drawn the walk but gets punched out three and two and he makes what is a pitcher's pitch? K Zone's got it right on the corner. So does Ed Rapuanu. And for a last pitch of the night for a pitcher, it was a pretty doggone good one. Mike Bethini to the mound in a regular season game for the first pitching change of his managerial career, and a job well done by Kyle Loesch here on opening night. 
Seven and a third leaves with a four to nothing lead. Fernando Salas on his way in for the Cardinals. Tomorrow ESPN 2 has an opening day doubleheader including the Red Sox in Detroit the first game of the regular season for Prince Fielder with the Tigers the Marlins will go up to Cincinnati and take on the Reds at 4 Eastern Friday another doubleheader the Giants and Diamondbacks at 7 Eastern and then the Royals will take on Albert Pujols and the Los Angeles Angels at 10 Eastern time great baseball coming your way over the next couple of days on ESPN 2 and it's presented by Burger King. First pitch swinging and Fonte ground ball to second. Scoop at first and safe. Safe. And Berkman doesn't believe it. Infante and Berkman was eight steps to the dugout. Have to get another look because Berkman seems certain that the out had been recorded and now Mike Matheny just made his first pitching change and now he comes out for his first regular season discussion with an umpire. With Mike Matheny's pitching change right there, he now has 12,235 more to catch Tony La Russa. <laughs> Who's number one all time? Tony La Russa. Bobby Cox is second, and he's about 2,000 or uh, 2,000 behind. How about that? Well, he's out. Boy, no wonder he's coming off the field. Unless his from, unless his foot came off the bag and from that angle we couldn't see it. There's Tony La Russa, longtime manager of the Cardinals, now a special assistant to the commissioner. John Buck, the oh. batter. Pop up or this ball will get out of play. Got another angle on the play at first base. Well, he's he's out. Well, the call does not go Berkman's way, the Cardinals' way. So the Marlins still alive here in the bottom of the eight. Two outs and a man at first, down four to nothing. Greg Dobbs has come out in the on deck circle in the pitcher spot. What a nice weapon for a National League team to have a guy like Greg Dobbs sitting over there as a left hand pinch hitter. Sixty RBIs that's a bunch. Jay giving chase won't get this one. Infante around third and in to score. John Buck drives in the first run for the Miami Marlins here in their new park. It's four to one.
Well, the out safe call at first base cost the Cardinals a run right here. Mike Matheny might argue a little harder next time when he knows that this could happen after it. And now they are back in this ball game. It's the first ball tonight that I thought actually carried well. Might have been a little shift in the wind. Nice piece of hitting. That ball was down. John yep. Buckland down and got that ball well. Salazar, the left-hander Zevchinsky on his way in with Greg Dobbs having been announced. Miami's on the board here in the bottom of the eighth. John Buck drives in the first run of the season for the Miami Marlins. They're down four to one here in the bottom of the eighth inning. He's at second, two down. New pitcher, left-hander Mark Zepchinski, split last season between the Blue Jays and Cardinals. Not just your prototypical lefty specialist can go longer, face righties as well. Ozzie Guillen brings up a pinch hitter for the pinch hitter as Austin Kearns will bat against Zepchinski. Dobbs was. Announces the pinch hitter that Mike Matheny got his lefty, so Ozzie Guillen brings up the right hand hitting Kearns, a guy who had his best years with Cincinnati back at the beginning of his career, has also played for Washington, Cleveland, and the Yankees. Outside, a ball and a strike. He's, he's been a little bit well traveled the last few years. But when he squares it up, it still makes a loud sound. He's a strong kid. He's always been able to hit the fastball, that's for sure. And a little cripple breaking ball inside from a lefty he feasts on too, dropping the head of the bat on it. Zepchinski took just enough off on that. The count's one and two. We'll change up a little fade and sink on it. Got him out front. Zepchinski, expert at getting lefties out. Last year they hit only 163. So Ozzie Guillen flip swap pinch hitting for the pinch hitter to Austin Kearns, where you go up to about 275 that righties hit off of Zepchinski. So he gained 112 some points. Got him. Kern strikes out, but the Marlins do get a run here in the bottom of the eighth. The first run for the home team in this brand new ballpark is John Buck goes down and gets it. Doubles to right center field, scoring Omar Infante with the first run for Miami. But they're still done down four to one at the end of eight.
Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned in making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. Top of the ninth inning here at Marlins Park with Oral Hershiser, Terry Francona, and Buster Olney. I'm Dan Schulman. Opening night baseball presented by Burger King. We invite you to join us again tomorrow afternoon, 1 o'clock Eastern Time from Comerica Park in Detroit. We'll be there for the Tigers opener as they host the Red Sox. Also at 4 o'clock Eastern Time from Cincinnati, the Marlins will be there as the Reds play their first game of the 2012 season. That game's at 4 Eastern tomorrow on ESPN2. Right hander Steve Ciszek into the game and now for Miami. His numbers last year with the Marlins at 263 ERA and 45 appearances. Top of the order for the Cardinals, beginning with Rafael for call. First pitch swinging, drives it deep center field and off the wall on the fly. And I don't know if the wind shifted in the Definitely. last inning or so, but first Bucks hit and then for calls. Definitely has shifted, and I bet you the temperatures dropped about 10, 12 degrees. And the ball is definitely carrying out there to right center now. Rafael for call picking on a first pitch finding one that he likes early dropped the head of the bat on it, drove it right in that gap and there was no wind holding that ball up at all that ball carried very well stayed behind it and drove it firmed up the front side just like you do in golf to get some power. This is tough duty for C shack here. He's normally a situational guy to get a righty out and he comes in and he's faced two switch hitters they're going to hit left handed mm -hmm. off of him. Here's the second one in Beltron. Third hit of the game for Fercal, by the way. He's driven in a run, stolen a base. You know, we talked to Mike Matheny before the game about Rafael Fercal because early in spring training, the scouting reports coming back that maybe he had lost a step and the swing had gotten long and bat was slow. And he said, you know, just a veteran player coming along. We talked to him in mid-spring and he started to bear down, started to shorten up the swing, getting into the slashes that we've seen and the running and bunning. And they really feel good about the way he's swinging the bat to start the season. Reaching for it, Beltron pops it up for Reyes. One down. And you can see him here. He's trying to pull that ball to move the runner. And he just got his hands too far inside. He tried to go out and around, trying to he get it. He wanted to hook, hook that it. second so bad. Now Holiday 0 for 4, including a couple of strikeouts. Ground ball to second. Two down as for call takes third. For call was the author of the happy flight when he came over in a trade to the St. Louis Cardinals and they talked about winning the getaway day games and his energy kind of the same energy that Jose Reyes has brought to the Marlins now it's really a spark and energy and a great glove man that helped him out at short but Jose will be looking to bring that light to the Marlins. Well, this is getaway day right it's a one yep. game series one so. game it's a happy flight. <laughs> the Cardinals will fly up to Milwaukee they've got an off day tomorrow they'll. Play into Milwaukee on Friday, open up a three game series there as Berkman's going to be put on again. And the Marlins, as we mentioned, will fly to Cincinnati and play the Reds tomorrow afternoon. There's the closer for the St. Louis Cardinals, Jason Mott. We're allowed to call him that this You're year. We're allowed to call him that. Well, Tony LaRusa actually on the field after the celebration. When they won the World Series said OK you're my closer and Mott said there are no more games. <laughs> <laughs> but Tony La Russa didn't want to I guess add to the pressure they had nine different. How about this Jerry you ever have a season where nine different pitchers got a save for you. We had nine different pitchers in Philadelphia try to get a save. <laughs> <laughs> Mott got the big saves late for the Cardinals in September and October. And Mike Matheny on the first day of spring training said he's my closer. David Freeze is the batter. Three for four with a couple of RBIs. St. Louis has done a really good job of developing their own young bullpen arms. 
for general managers, there's there's not a bigger risk than going out and paying big money for relievers. Their years are so up and down, mm -hmm. it's just always a gamble. They've got so much depth. When Carpenter was hurt, they moved Lance Lynn, who was going to be a key guy in their bullpen, into the rotation to take Carpenter's spot. Yet they've still got Boggs and Salas and Zepchinski and Mott. They've still got a lot of depth down there. And they've got some kids coming through their minor league system, as every contender is going to have to have if they really are a contender. You start with 12 pitchers normally on opening day. You probably wind up using about 25 by the end of the season one and, way or the other. And sometimes more. Yep. That's that speech you give when you send them down mm -hmm. and you just hope they listen. Yeah. Fly ball to left field. Morrison started back now coming in and makes the catch. Tougher night than it looks here at Marlins Park. But Morrison makes the play to end the inning. We're going to keep it here as we get ready for the bottom of the ninth inning. Our first regular season game of the season. The first ever game at Marlins Park here in Miami. Jason Mott will be on his way in to try to lock it up. It's a safe situation for Mott and the Cardinals as we go to the bottom of the ninth. Adrenaline's pumping for Mott. And here he comes. Well, let's start with the ballpark, guys. I mean, we didn't know how it would play. We got here for batting practice yesterday. Now you've seen a game. What are your thoughts on the new place? Go ahead, big guy. I think it's beautiful. Yeah. So do I. I again, it, it has the South Beach mm -hmm. flair to it that you're not going to see at Fenway or Yankee Stadium. Yep. But this is what they wanted. And I, I think it's great for baseball. And it's great for this franchise. This franchise obviously needed something. Yes. If they're going to get fans and play games without rain delays and the humidity, uh, beautiful night, roof open, yeah. and the ballpark has certainly presented itself well. Kyle Loesch has certainly presented himself well here tonight. Well, Kyle Loesch has been outstanding. I think, you know, he pitched real well. He kept the ball on the corners. He threw his, all of his pitches and hitters counts, and he put people away when he needed to. Only a few strikes. Only a few strikeouts, but here a 2 1 fastball and hitter count runs it down the hands, and then he just lived on the corners most of the night. 3 2 making a pitcher's pitch, 1 2 making a nice breaking ball, and then walking people off the end of the plate. He's going to pitch the contact, he's also going to make them hit it weekly if he hits his spots. And Kyle Loesch is tonight's Chevrolet player of the game. A no hitter into the seventh inning, winds up going seven and a third. Gives up just a run on two hits and is in line for the win here tonight. If Jason Mott can take care of the Marlins in the bottom of the ninth inning. Mott a guy who can get the fastball up there at about 98 miles an hour. A converted catcher. Six years ago. Nine saves last season. Great strikeout to walk ratio. and Got the big outs in October. I think the outs he got in October and in September at the end of the year were a lot more pressure than dealing with the title of closer. And I think he'll do just fine. As soon as this game is over, a reminder to stay tuned for baseball tonight. Carl Ravitch, John Cruck, Barry Larkin are here in Miami. And they'll bring you baseball tonight up until the beginning of the NBA game at 1030 Eastern time. Crowd making some noise. Feeling it a little bit as we go to the bottom of the ninth. Jose Reyes will lead it off. And the strike at 95 from Mott. But that's a nice, that's Jose playing the game right there. Make him throw a strike. Let him maybe get a chance to get himself in trouble. Reyes tonight is one for three. A couple of fly balls, and then he had the first hit of the night for Miami. Leading off the bottom of the seventh. Ball two. Uh, David Freeze is in at third. Looking for the possible bunt to keep Reyes off the base, but with the firmness of the pitch, he could be slapping it over there. 
to be a little bit more comfortable now with two strikes that he can back up when you're in there on the grass and you've got a guy in the mound throwing 95 plus and you've got a slap hitter like Reyes that can square it up. It's not real comfortable being in there about six feet inside the bag. 2-2. Two -two. Line to left center. A base hit. Jay hustles over, cuts it off, and holds Reyes to a single. That was a really nice at bat by Reyes. He went up there, he worked the count, gets to the point where he has to swing the bat, stays inside the ball. Once he hits it, comes out of the box hard and doesn't gamble because they're down three runs. That was that's a nice piece of baseball right there, sure all was. the way around. Everything he could to let Mott put him on base when he knew Mott wasn't going to do it, he yep. did it himself. Bonifacio is the batter. Bonifacio tonight 0 for 2 also hit by a pitch. That risk of trying to get to second there is just not worth it. No. Not when you're down three. And not when the guy hitting behind you doesn't ground into many double plays he's so fast hit from the left side. The situation strong. right here where a lot of managers will play behind the runner at first, not caring if he's still second. It, the fact that you have a flamethrower on the mound makes it a little harder to pull through that hole. You like playing behind him still anyway? I, again, it's everybody, everybody's different. Yep. But again, you're, the, you're playing for the third run, not for that one run there. Trying to stay away from a, a, a rally, a first and third. You know, you're not going to double up Bonifacio anyway. Reyes at first, Bonifacio the batter, and some of the big hitters, Ramirez and Stanton. Do up next for the Marlins here in the bottom of the ninth. They're down by three. Chopper back to the mound. The second one, not in time at first. Fielder's choice, one down. They could have put the bag back on the outfield grass. You wouldn't have doubled him up. <laughs> Wow, that was fast. <laughs> that looked like me and Dan Schulman pushing the car. <laughs> <laughs> remember, he's got a sore leg, too. Yeah, watch him get out of the box. This in Mott. Oh, my gosh. He's in Mott's glove. He's not even at the 45-foot line yet. And he just turns on the burners. It's not even close. And he coached it a little <laughs> bit at the end there. Right? He, just, yeah. he wasn't even at full speed. Pull up at the tape. I don't need the world record. <laughs> Cardinals two outs away from victory here on opening night. The batter is Hanley Ramirez 0 for 3. Hanley's been looking like he's wanting to go yard all night. Big kind of a big swing. He's hit some high fly balls and high pop ups. He's looking to want to be the first one to go yard here. High strike, one and one. But they need a base runner more than the home yep. run now. They got to get Stanton up there with a chance to tie this game. <laughs> See that little look there? From Ramirez to Rapuano saying, I don't know. That's the look you could give Ed Rapuano after you have four or five years in the leg. <laughs> you give him that look with about a year in the leg and you're in trouble. <laughs> And there's a clear cut strike one and two. Nothing fancy from Mott so far. Three fastballs in this at bat. He's got a little change up that's a new pitch this year, but I don't think it's time to break it out. I think he's going to go strength against strength, maybe default to a breaking ball, but he's liking that fastball, maybe we'll ride it up the ladder, go up by the letters where they call the strike. Blew it by him at 99 for out number two. That borderline strike that got called on Hanley, that really set up the hole at bat because now you're not only worried about velocity and breaking ball and getting on base, but you've got what you think is a large strike zone and especially in an area with a guy throwing above 95 that's hard to catch up. And I'll tell you what, he goes up and in ball. Up and in, catches it. K-Zone and Rapuano were right. Hanley was wrong. Comes back there, and now he's got to pick it up and worry about location, too. 97-98 at the letters. That's You're not going to hit it anyway. Nope. So the Marlins down to their final out. A one-strike count. 
on a Giancarlo Stanton. Big swing and a miss, 0 and 2. That's just unfair throwing a breaking ball at 91. Most pitchers top out at 91, 92. And he's topping out at 99 and throwing 91 mile or sliders. So what you're saying is he has two options here. <laughs> Wouldn't chase 93 that 93 mile, mile an hour slider. <laughs> Tying run in the on deck circle. And the Marlins down to their final out. And it's over. Got him with another slider. Mott strikes him out, picks up the save, and the Cardinals win. Spoiling it for the Marlins fans here on the first night at Marlins Park as St. Louis wins four to one here tonight. And Oral Kyle Loesch, the big story of the game. Kyle Loesch threw outstanding. A fill in for Chris Carpenter, but they've known for a while, so he was on work schedule. He had a great spring training, is now completely healthy. Great drop in ERA from last year, the year before last, the last year, and now he picks up right where he left off. And Tito, Rafael for call, three hits. David Fries, three hits. Two big contributors tonight. And they score early. Yep. They're on the road. They score early. They score first, and then they score next. That's a great formula for winning. So the Cardinals shake hands. Mike Matheny picks up a win in his first game as a regular season. A big league manager. The Cardinals beat Miami 4-1 to one tonight. Here in Miami for Oral, Terry, and Buster. I'm Dan Schulman saying thanks for watching. We hope you join us on ESPN2 tomorrow from Detroit. Time now for baseball tonight, right here from Miami. Here's Carl Ravitch.